Anyone that's clicked on the link to this video is no doubt familiar with the Apollo Guidance computer. Uh, there are a lot of reproductions, there's currently a, a team working on restoring one, and it's a very interesting device. It was obviously one of the first major control system computers to be designed, and there were some interesting aspects of it that I think are worth discussion. And this video is really an introduction to a, a very long-term project that I started some time ago that you may find interesting. The Apollo Guidance computer was one of the first major devices to be manufactured using integrated circuits. And this schematic is part of one of the modules that comprise the Apollo Guidance computer. Essentially, it was divided into a series of two major blocks. One of the blocks had 24 individual modules in it, and each of those modules had 120 integrated circuits in it. Now, at the time the AGC was designed, integrated circuits were in their infancy, and although they were in use in some military applications, the cost per integrated circuit was around a thousand dollars. Talking here back in the mid 1960s. So it was an interesting decision by Apollo to use the integrated circuits, or more specifically to further develop the integrated circuit so that it was suitable for use in a spacecraft. And you could say they, they, they had ulterior motives in trying to get reliable integrated circuits and use the Apollo program as a stepping stone to, towards that goal. But either way, the Apollo program really pushed forward the development of the integrated circuit. Calling them integrated circuits is, is almost a stretch. Now, they kind of were an integrated circuit, but essentially they were nothing more than six transistors and a few resistors in each one. This is the uh, original schematic for one of their integrated circuits. Now, you can see that all we have are six transistors arranged in two three input NOR gates. Um, so really all that's really in the package is six transistors and eight resistors. And there are 120 of these packages in each module. And as I said in the block that I'm looking at at the moment, there were 24 of these modules, although four of those modules were identical. Now one of the questions I've always had when thinking about the AGC it's that decision to develop the integrated circuit. Bear in mind the short timescale they had. Would it have been possible to miniaturize transistors such that they could have essentially built the entire device using transistors rather than having to develop the infrastructure required to manufacture the integrated circuits? So, as I say, there are lots of um, people that have produced emulators and reproductions in FPGAs and this sort of thing. But what I wanted to do was to see if it was possible to take what is probably the only alternate path that um, NASA could have taken at the time of the Apollo program, and that is to build the entire AGC using nothing more than transistors and resistors. So, um, as I say, this is the original schematic. But if you redraw that, you could represent exactly the same device uh, using this schematic. So, exactly the same, just a pair of three input NOR gates using the same arrangement of transistors and resistors. So, what I've been doing over the, the past uh, six months to, to a year is taking the original Apollo schematics so this being part of one of them. Um, each one of these individual components that are shown on the schematic, so if we take this one for example, it's shown here as a two input NOR gate, but what they did is if they only wanted a two input NOR gate, they simply ignored one of the inputs or the type to a rail. So um, they would just take two of the inputs and, and ignore the third. So they had everything from single uh, input arrangements, basically an inverter, through to using all three inputs as a three input NOR gate. There are quite a few of these schematics in the overall design, but what I've been doing is taking these schematics and translating them into uh, schematics in my uh, PCB CAD system. 
So what I end up with is a representation of the exact same schematic, but using transistors and resistors only. So no integrated circuits. I did originally consider using modern three input NOR gates for doing this, but that would kind of take me away from what my goal was to see if it was possible to build this using transistor technology. Now, of course, the transistors I'm using for expedience more than anything else are through hole, so they're quite large, but it's also partly because that's what would have been available at the time. But the question really is, could uh, NASA, or rather the, the developers of the, uh, the AGC, could they have developed the transistor into miniature surface mount more easily than developing integrated circuits? So. Once I have this, what I can do is translate it into a PCB layout. So I then end up with something like this. So once I have this layout, I can then lay out the required tracks to give me the um, a functional representation of each individual module. So as much as possible, I'm trying to stick to two-sided just for um, practicality. This is full size, this is how big the boards are. Now notice along the bottom there are two edge connectors. And they're double sided, it's top and bottom. And they have the same number of contacts as the original uh, AGC modules. So what I've been doing is keeping an identical pinout that was in the original schematic. So all these numbers in here are, are pin numbers on the connectors for each module and I've been keeping the same layout. So in theory, you should be able to take one of my modules. You won't plug in because the physical layout's different. If you took it in a pin for pin basis, you should be able to connect it into an actual AGC and it should work. Now, once I've got the board design done, I then actually have the boards made. So this is the, the first one. This is the first board, and as you can see, this is module one. This is a scalar module, and as I say, it is a functional equivalent of the actual original AGC. The only thing that's different is the transistors aren't in small packages as they were in the original AGC. Um, but apart from that, it's electronically identical. I've chosen resistor values based on the um, specification that is still available for the original AGC integrated circuits. So as I say, electronically, this is identical to the original AGC scalar module. So I've been working my way through the individual modules. I've got a, a few done, so that's the scalar module. We've then got a timer module. And I'll see what I will ultimately end up with is a full set of modules for the AGC. However, anyone familiar with the AGC will know that that's not really the end of the story. The design of the AGC was very much a continual prototype development uh, design. It's the sort of thing you, you kind of build on breadboards at the moment in in small blocks, um, but they never resolved it into uh, final integrated designs. What I mean by that is if you look at the schematics, most of the components, most of these integrated circuits really have uh, one, their inputs tied to one of the pins on the module and then their output pins tied to another pin on the module. There's a little bit of um, uh, interconnected circuitry within the modules, but for the most part it's kind of um, pin in, pin out sort of arrangement. In other words, it's the actual backplane that these modules are plugged into that creates most of the interconnected circuitry for the AGC. The modules themselves don't have that much um, internal wiring. And if you ever look at the um, backplane for the AGC, you, you'll see what I mean. It's an absolute maze of wires, simply because it is really the main equivalent to a PCB that we'd use these days for interconnecting all the components. So you can almost look at the 
the AGC modules as if they as if they were their large integrated circuits. And then the back plane is used to connect or interconnect the pins on those modules in such a way that the required schematic for the AGC is created. Now this makes it very difficult to design these PCBs. And the reason for that is because through hole components, especially when we're getting on close to a thousand transistors on each of these boards, the holes that the transistors pass through take up a great deal of the space available on the PCB. So it doesn't leave a lot of space for the tracks. And we need a lot of tracks simply because of the huge number of inputs and outputs to the components. So it's a bit of a, uh, an epic job doing each of these modules. But it's kind of interesting and, and certainly it's a good way of learning about how the AGC works. I'll come out with a lot more um, updates as I progress and a lot more information on how each of these modules works and what it does and then ultimately sometime in the distant future I will hopefully end up with a fully functional version of the AGC that could be argued to be NASA's alternative uh, at the time of the Apollo program. Any comments on this will be welcome, uh, any information or advice would also be welcome.